Hello everybody, this is Michelle Fox and welcome back to The Simple Quilter. Today I'm going to be filling a request from one of my subscribers and that was to show how to square up a quilt block. I just want to mention my new shirt. Yes, another new shirt. Um, you can find the website for these shirts down below along with the 15% off coupon code for all sewing and quilting apparel on that website. And uh, I filmed a video with my husband and my son, and I got lots of comments on that video. Uh, many of you wanted to see them appear again, and I think we can fulfill your request on that. However, I wondered if any of you had any questions to ask my son and my husband regarding quilts for men. If you do, leave them in the comment section below, and we'll see what we can do. These two quilts behind me are quilts that I did a video on, so if you'd like to see that video, I'll leave a card uh, up above, and I'll step aside just briefly so you can see these in case you haven't seen them before. Now, I'm not sure if you square up your quilt blocks while you're quilting or not. I used to never do that, but I also had quilts that were very difficult to get sewn up into a quilt top. Now I square up all of my blocks and I even square up the small blocks as I'm building them into larger blocks. Now here are some things to do and some things to think about before you square up your quilt blocks. Number one, you have to press your quilt block flat and so you may want to use starch or a starch alternative when you are pressing your blocks and that might include the faultless spray starch, best press or flatter which are two starch alternatives and I'll put links in the description below for those products if you're interested and then also you're going to have blocks that are too big, you're going to have blocks that are too small and you're going to have blocks that are just right. Now even experienced quilters have difficulty coming out with the exact sized block. We're just human, so we are going to make mistakes and sometimes we are going to have to remake our blocks. Now, you're gonna have to use your own judgment on whether you want to fit those blocks that are too small or too big into your quilt top. If they're too small or too big, you will have difficulties such as your points will be cut off and it's going to be hard. If the block is too small, you're going to have narrow seams which could weaken your quilt top. And if they're too big, you're going to be cutting off lots of points. So that decision will just be up to you. Now I have said before, it doesn't have to be perfect to be wonderful and it doesn't, but you certainly want to be sure that you're going to be satisfied with the overall look of your quilt top when it's complete. Okay, so let's go over some of the materials you're going to need. You're going to need a rotary cutter with a sharp blade. You're going to need a rotary mat. Now, you don't have to have these, but I have two rotating rotary mats, a small one and a larger one. And I have my 8.5 by 24.5 inch ruler. I have several um, square rulers. Uh, this one goes up to 16 and a half. Now, if you want to purchase a square ruler to help um, square up your quilt blocks, I would probably get the largest size or maybe even the 12 and a half inch. If you're typically making blocks larger than that, I would just get the largest ruler I can because you can square up from one inch Clear up to 16 and a half inch blocks with this one. But I do have several, and you can have several if you want. And then I do have a specialty ruler that I wanted to show you. I've shown you this before in um, one of my previous videos, but this is called the Log Cabin Trim Tool 2 ruler, and it just squares everything up as you go along, so I wanted to be sure to show you that. So this isn't a must. The first thing I want to show you is how to square up the little portions of blocks and show you how 
much better the outcome is when you square these blocks up as you go along. Now this is the center seam line. This is the only seam line in the block. So I'm going to be lining up this middle line. This middle line is your 45 degrees line. I'm just going to be lining that up going from corner to corner. Now I'm cutting a four inch block so I want to be sure I have a little bit extra on each side. I'm just going to go up and over. And I'm not going to rotate that little mat. I mean it does rotate but I'm just going to turn it simply because it's so small and it's easier for me to do. Now with this cut I'm going to line this edge up with the 4 inch mark. And I'm going to line this edge up with the 4 inch mark. And this again is going on the middle seam line. Up and across. Well, good grief. Okay, so there you have it, just these really nice blocks, and I'll do the same with those. Well, I've actually already done the same with those, and here is the outcome of the block. Now, you do not want to try to square up a block that looks like this. This definitely needs a press before you start, but I did want to show you that. That's one I made earlier. Now, this block is supposed to be a seven and a half inch unfinished block size. So for this one it's going to be important to know where the middle is. Now these blocks are both four inches so this is the center this way, this is the center this way. Now this is important to know. You need to know where the center of your block is. And I know that since this is a seven and a half inch unfinished block that each of these with this seam down the middle these are going to be three and three fourths inch. So the three and three fourths inch should line up at the middle up there and down here. Now we do have a middle seam line here. Okay, so that's at three and three fourths, three and three fourths. These are at three and three fourths on these lines. And this block needs very little trimming. The only trimming I'm really going to be doing is those little threads you see. And the reason is because I squared up my blocks as I went. Then you're just going to turn that. I could have used my rotating mat for this. Now this time you do need to just put it on the seven and a half. Be sure this is in the middle and up and across. The next block I wanted to show you is just a square and a square block. Now this block needs to be, this is going to measure up as a nine and a half unfinished block. So I know that these pieces need to be four and three-fourths inches. Now with these points I want to be sure that I'm going to have a quarter of an inch all the way around. So the first thing I'm going to do on my ruler is I'm going to put the four and three-quarters inch line there let me put it this way so it's a little bit easier. Four and three fourths there, and four and three fourths right there. These are going to square up to nine and a half. There is a little bit that needs to be trimmed off. I want to be sure I'm going to have a quarter of an inch on all sides so that I'm not going to be cutting any points off. Okay, 
So then I'm just going to go up and across. There you have your nice nine and a half inch block. Now the next block, I'm going to show you two different ways to trim this block. Now this is a block that I wanted to show you because a lot of times quilters will just make blocks that are, they'll just make them too big so they can trim them down to the exact size that they need. Now I'm going to show you how to do this using two different rulers. Now I started out with a five inch square. So here's a fourth of an inch seam and here's a fourth of an inch seam. So this should measure right at four and a half inches. Which it does. It measures here four and a half, here four and a half, there four and a half, and there four and a half. So I want to have this as an eight and a half inch unfinished block. So what all I have to do is add two inches. So now that I, that middle is square, I'm going to line up my main seam lines going across and going down at the two inch mark. Okay, And then I'm simply going to trim up and across rotate that. Oh, I keep forgetting to use my rotating mat. So you can see how it's not really that necessary. Now this time I just have to line it up as eight and a half and eight and a half. The center line should go right through the points, which it does. And I'm going to go up and across. There you go. And there you have just a really nice finished block that is squared up. Now with this block, it's the same as the other, but I wanted to show you how you could do it with just your 8.5 by 24.5 inch ruler. What you can do, you know that this is going to be 4.5, so you can check it out to make sure it's square. Four and a half there, four and a half coming down there. So you know that all you have to do is line up and cut this off at two inches. Now this one, you're only going to be able to do one side at a time. Line up those lines on your ruler, those main seam lines. You can check here, you can check there, you can check down here. Just go straight up. And you're just going to keep turning this block until you're finished. We can even check this with the square here. There it is, eight and a half inches, lines going right through the middle of the block. Okay. Now the next block I want to show you is a courthouse step block. And I wanted to show you this one because I want to show you how you can use specialty rulers. Now this is my 12 and a half inch block um, 
this is my 12 and a half inch square and this quilt block it looks like I've already trimmed this up there's really not much that needs to be done to it but I do want to show you how this works so on a block like this this line should bisect all these corners okay this is 12 and a half inches you can line um, your lines up with these main seam lines making sure that they're straight there and you would just go up and across rotate the mat this time and then go up and across but I wanted to show you this specialty ruler this is a log cabin trim tool too, and I use this to make this block. But I want to show you how nice this is. Now in this one you use this little square right here. You just make sure that your square fits in that square. Now this has a quarter of an inch seam built in all the way around. And you line these lines up with the major seam lines. And you're just going to go up and across, rotate, I bumped the ruler a little bit, I need to readjust it. And then you're going to go up and across. And that just trims it up beautifully. I really like these rulers. In the description below, I'll put a link for these. I think I'm going to check out the square and a square trim tool too ruler. And I think I want to try out the pineapple trim tool too rulers. I really like these. I like how nice the blocks come out and it just makes your quilts so easy to put together. Now I wanted to show you a couple of more examples of blocks. Now these have, I have squared these up and this is a 12 and a half inch square so I know the middle needs to be at six and a fourth and the middle is going to be this seam, this seam, and this seam. So when I put my ruler on here, this is a 12 and a half inch ruler, is going to need, these center lines are going to need to be at 6 and a fourth, which they are there, and 6 and a fourth, which they are right there. These, this line is going to need to go right through those corners, right through those points. And then I would just, I just trimmed it up and across, rotate it up and across. Now on this block, it's super important, it was super important that I didn't cut off these points. And on this side you can see the fourth of an inch and it's easy to see whether you're going to be cutting those points off or not. All right, the last one I wanted to show you. Now, this block looks really nice. However, it is a little bit short on one side. So when I line this one up, this is the center right here. So that's at six and a fourth. This should be at six and a fourth. That should go through six and a fourth. This middle line should go right through the middle, but this block is actually a little more than an eighth of an inch too short on each side. Now I could probably repress that. I may not have gotten the seams completely pressed out. I could try that. I could try to starch it again and just repress it. I think though I would use this block, but I'm going to have to be really careful because there's just barely an eighth of an inch 
on some of the sides. So I would divide that shortness up on each side of the block. I would also decrease the stitch length on my sewing machine to be sure that that was tiny stitches to hold that more securely. And then when I quilted it, or when I had it quilted, I would choose a design that crossed all of the seams to help strengthen your quilt top. Well, in act to help strengthen your quilt. I know that squaring up quilt blocks is not the funnest part of quilting. At times it can be trying and difficult, but it does help improve the overall appearance of your quilt, and it makes it a lot easier to get your quilt blocks together into a quilt top. Now, if you've enjoyed today's video, please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Share with a friend. Leave a comment below. List a question for Jared and Wes if you want to ask them a question for a future video. And until next time, have fun quilting.